So it's almost, people talk about chelation IV therapy, but it's almost like an oral chelation uh, approach, right? It really is, because your body has a chelation system, but it needs to be optimized, and it's under-functioning. And Mm -hmm. so pulling all this down to the GI tract and grabbing it all is like an oral chelation, but it's stimulating your chelation system. So to maximize all of that, you need this happening at a GI level, this binding. You need phase two upregulation by our polyphenols, uh, the wasabi, uh, garlic, and we use a lot of our lipoic acid. And then you need the glutathione. And so... Our lipoic as opposed to alpha lipoic. So alpha is, can a, use both? is a mixture. You can use both, both but R is specific for There is a a protein that we trigger to go into the nucleus and turn all the genes on to turn up those phase two enzymes. They're called chemoprotective genes. And that protein is called the NRF2 protein. And it is specifically R lipoic acid, not S lipoic. Alpha is an equal mix of R and S. Mm. And then they're both fighting at this lock and key structure. When the R is there, it can get in there alone and it can be much more potent and it gets that protein to go into the nucleus and turn up all our chemoprotective genes. Hmm. Then the last thing that we need is glutathione. And yes, you can use precursors like an osteocysteine and cysteine, but often in a damaged person, uh, those mechanisms for turning an osteocysteine into glutathione are under-functioning. And so bringing glutathione in directly is, is the way that we want to go. Now you could use DMG, dimethylglycine, and I've looked at pathways that show that it turns into glutathione, but what, well, you, what you're saying is... Well, lubricate the pathways into okay. glutathione. DMG and TMG do not directly go into glutathione, but they're, they're helping focus uh, a very complex pathway to drive towards glutathione. Would you use both? I would use both for sure. I mean, DMG is just fantastic for the adrenals. And I love the it. Adrenals, I use it every day. Yeah, that's right. I use your adrenal <laughs> DMG. Yeah. And if the adrenals can't generate energy, then the mitochondria can't generate energy. I've often said that the mitochondria are the adrenals of the cell. And so we have to feed all those together. And all these phases of detox and all this transport, they all need ATP. And if you can't generate ATP in the cell, you can't detoxify. Now, if we address this to those with fatigue or chronic fatigue, it's an elegant way to help people to restore their energy by Mm -hmm. using this pathway. Because people are thinking, oh, all I have to do is just keep depending on that coffee, and the coffee's just, (laughs) (laughs) they're going to crash, right? (laughs) And we know, boom, yeah, because your adrenals can't. And and if you're using anabolic, you know, some even thyroid or testosterone, they sometimes can't tolerate that. Right. So if we go back and rebuild the adrenals, and, and help with the level. DMG and help with the glutathione. Now all of a sudden you're getting some nice natural energy. Oh yeah, yeah. And get those metals out of the kidneys. Yeah. And the adrenals are gonna bounce back for you. Yeah, and so it's the glutathione system upregulation <clears throat> is gonna work on the mercury, the cadmium, and the arsenic. But you gotta get the lead out too, and you gotta get the lead especially out of the kidneys. And that's when we look to EDTA, a liposomal EDTA. And the liposomal EDTA has shown fantastic ability to get the lead levels up in the urine and bleed it all out of the out of the kidneys. And you know, EDTA you can use IV pushes. Uh, those can be a little aggressive because you got to do a lot at once. Day to day therapies are better. The suppositories have shown good data. But if you can take it orally. That's a lot nicer than using a suppository. So give me an idea. Um, your person who's measured to have high levels of metal, uh, arsenic, lead, uh, cadmium. I mean, unfortunately, we're exposed to so many toxins. Yeah. And then we have Fukushima with heavy oh, uh, yeah. particles coming in, uh, cesium, c- cesium, cesium and radioactive iodine, and who knows what else of, amongst that spectrum. And you need the that, that happening, and you need great internal antioxidant defense, and that's... At the core, it's the glutathione system, and it's upregulating all these chemoprotective genes. That's how you have the protection against this onslaught, because otherwise it just beats you down, and it turns that system down even farther, and you become even more of an accumulator. But they can't just go out and get your standard glutathione supplement that just has some glutathione. Oh, no, no, it's not going to absorb. No. And uh, you, you need science it. shows you liposome need a deliveries, very right? Small 
liposome that can be absorbed beginning in the oral cavity and then continuing on through. A lot of people are making liposomes, really, really big liposomes. They have no hope of getting past the lipases and the bile and getting intact. Now, often the guys who make the real big ones put so much phosphatidylcholine in that it disrupts the uh, tight junctions in the GI tract and gets higher absorption, but Maybe we don't want that in the GI tract. Maybe we're bringing in endotoxin and other problems in with the GI tract. I like my absorption from a controlled, very small liposome that can absorb right through the oral cavity. And that's what we do. 100 nanometer, intraorally absorbed uh, li liposomal glutathione. We do the lipoic acid that way. We do the methyl B12. You want to see uptake, I'll show you the data on the B12 intraoral uptake coming up immediately after it's in your mouth, the blood levels are, are rising. 500 point rises from 1,000 micrograms. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. Yeah, and since That's I look- That's only an intraoral small liposomes. And we'd like to look under um, oxidative stress or microscopy, look at the shape, the right. quality of the cells. We can determine if, if the cells are absorbing the B12, yeah. uh, the 5-methyl... Uh, 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 yeah, the 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. Right. Metafolin, we use that now. Are you? And, uh, we, yeah, we have a beta product now. We're waiting to finish uh, a patent on the delivery, but that's because it's very hard to have that stable in a solution. Right. So we found ourselves a right way around that. I'll give you some later. Oh, it's just stellar.